Hey peeps, how you doing today? You doing good? That's good. I feel like something right here. How I'm doing, I'm doing good. Well, it's to be expected, y'all. This basement be aggravating my whole nerves. But before I get into that, I got this lip gloss on today. So, pretty supply stuff. Uh, today is August 30th, the last, uh, tomorrow the last day of, of August. August 30th, Sunday at 1.12 in the p.m. And it feels like 83, but it say it's 75. Feel warmer than that, but it did get pretty cool. It cooled down a lot up in here over the night, so. It's 76. The temperature in the house is 76, according to that thermostat. Y'all, I recorded the basement. I'm going to probably put it at the end of this video so y'all can see what I be talking about. But the hubby been down there getting it up, but it just it keep coming back up. And so tomorrow is Monday. So they need to send somebody out tomorrow. But me and him been talking. We think we really going to move because unless they really talking about fixing this soon because this hindered us from washing because my washer and dryer is right there where that water come up and it be like a puddle like then the water be dirty and all that type of stuff it's just it's too much it's too much so we'll see when i get in contact with them tomorrow and whatever they say gonna determine us and then I just say action because I got to see something. They need to do something. Like, for real, for real. So, we'll see if we'll be moving this year or not. I really don't feel like it, but uh, I do what I have to do. So, we do what we have to do. Oh, yeah. Kind of emotionally, mentally drained. And that just done kind of like throated my day for real. Because Sonny normally wash on Sundays. He can't go down there and wash. Like you flush the toilet, the water come up. It's like it's really that back up. Like so, he talking about is broke. But in the meantime, just see somebody out here to clear it again until y'all figure it out. Send somebody out here. Somebody need to come out here. If he had to send somebody out here Friday, he wouldn't even be having this problem. But this dude, he, he, he be procrastinating when it comes to sending somebody over here to do this. Because um, they be trying to have that one man do, I guess, more important stuff. Then come on over here because I've been having this problem, y'all, ever since I moved here. The first year I moved in here. But it wasn't like, it wasn't constant. It was like maybe once a year that I have to ride it. But they said they break, broke, I don't know, maybe riding it all, riding it, eventually broke the pipe. I don't know how it got this bad. It just done got real bad. Last year, it started getting bad. Well, was it this year? This year, I think it, it, this is the worst it done been. When we started getting all that rain and... I don't know. But it's like... I have to wrap my brain really around moving. I don't feel like it. We've only been here four years. My other place, we stayed at 13, so... I'm over basements, and that's why I keep telling the hubby, basements always be a problem. I don't know who ideal it was. Genius idea it was to build basements below ground. Like, and I don't know how old this house is, and I don't care if I am now, but I know it's old. These pipes, um, 
I don't know how they laid the foundation down when they built this house. I'd rather live in a house built up than built below ground. You know, it's just, man, I must stay in like one, two, three, four houses with basements. I ain't up here no some worse than others, but never always had issues with the basement. So, and they always be like old houses. I'm just over it. I'm over it, y'all. I stay in an apartment, then stay in a basement. And that's for real, for real. Well, I'ma put my stuff, really. <sighs> so, yeah. That's my current situation. But y'all, I'm gonna put the video at the end so y'all can see it. I recorded it. So let me get on into this read. I just made a video yesterday going up Monday, tomorrow. This one will be Wednesday. So, yeah. So y'all ready for this read? Smoking in hell. Oh, oh, I get into that after I do this read. Okay, here we go. Mid, late 1970s, because I got to do the Bible this time too. Okay, Mid, this the late 1970s, y'all. Uh, topic young adult smokers means young smokers info an internal Brown and Williams memo outlines that quote when describing market, cat market categories and target audiences we use reference such as young smokers young market youth market and etc in the future when describing the low age end of the cigarette business please use the term young adult smoker or young adult smoking market market and that was quoted by brown and williamson back in 1975. just the young smokers young adult how young adult like 14 to 24 14 ain't no young adult who y'all targeting? Youth. Keep it at youth. Not young adult. They don't want to like describe it as. Yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> uh, topic. Marlboro's growth rate due to young, to young smokers. Info. A report by a Philip Morris researcher. Myron E. Johnston. To the head of research at Philip Morris, Robert B. Sil Seligman outlines that. So it's a report from Philip Morris to the head of research at Philip Morris from a researcher. He outlined he outlines that quote Marlboro's phenomenal growth rate in the past. Discombobulated. Y'all know this like my this that's my favorite word for 2020. Okay. Marlboro's phenomenal growth rate in the past have been attributable in large part to our high market penetration among young smokers. 15 to 19 years old. My own data, which includes younger teenagers, shows even higher Marlboro market penetration among 15 to 17 year olds. Marlboro smokers, being on the average considerably younger than the total smoking population, tend to have lower than average incomes. The decline in the popularity of Marlboro Red among young smokers will probably continue and thus furthermore reduce its rate of growth. That was quoted by Phil Morris back in 1975. Okay. Topic. Rationalized smoking. Repressed health concerns. Info. Brown and Williamson advertising objective for a viceroy. Wow is to quote 
communicate e effectively that Viceroy is a satisfying, flavorful cigarette which young adult smokers enjoy by providing them a rationalization for smoking or a repression of the health concerns they appear to need. And that was quoted by Brown and Williamson back in 1976. Topic, established brand for 14 through 18 year olds to maintain position. Info, a RJR document outlining planning assumptions and forecasts for the periods 1976 through 1986. 10 year span outlines that quote, evidence is now available to indicate that the 14 through 18 year old group is an increasing segment of the smoking population. RJR-T must soon establish a successful new brand in this market if our position in the industry is to be maintained over the long term. Wow must establish a successful new brand in this market. If our position in the industry is to maintain, be maintained over the long term. And that was quoted by RJR back in 1976. Topic, Phil Morris increases 14 year olds. Wow, info. And internal RJR, memo entitled share of smokers by age group includes young younger smokers and here go the quote for from a corporate standpoint philip morris posted a four point gain among 14 through 17 year old smokers RJR and Brown and Williamson each lost two points. And that was quoted by RJR back in 1976. Wow. From a corporate standpoint, Philip Morris supposed a four point game among 14 through 17 year old smokers. RJR and Brown, Brown and Williamson each lost two points. The competition is real who they can get uh, people, how many youth they can get to smoke their cigarettes and keep the money coming in. Um, money over people. Topic, opportunities from young starters. Info, a Brown and Williamson document highlights how the third major opportunities for cool super lights Gain could come from four taste, 80 fast smokers, and from starters. Wow. Third major opportunities for cool super light gains could come from four taste, 80 fast smokers, and from starters. Young between the age of 16 to 25 males account for a disappropriate approach. Appro Proportionate young between the age of 16 to 25 males account for a disproportionate amount of both these segments. Cool K O O L has the highest attraction rate along with Marlboro for new starters in the full taste menthol and non menthol seconds. And that was quoted by Brown and Williamson back in 1977. How's it looking down there? The same? Yeah. What's she fit to do? Nothing. Fight against the wind. Yeah. Yeah. Do what it's gonna do? Yeah. You gotta clean the vacuum and brushes. What you could look up? I wasn't recording. I recorded it already. Yeah. yeah. I went down this so I could leave. I'm gonna put it in my video too.
So yeah. Wow. And the full taste menthol and non menthol. Cool has the highest attraction rate amongst the males between the ages of 16 and 25. Wow. Okay, I'm turning the page. On my pencil, this 30. Here we go. Topic. Position brand to appeal to lifestyle, then let nicotine take over. Info. A working paper prepared for Imperial Tobacco, which is in, located in Canada, recognized the transition from glamour to addiction. Quote. At a younger age, taste requirements and satisfaction in a cigarette are thought to play a secondary role to the social requirements. Trying to be cool, try to fit in, I'm my own person. Therefore, taste until a certain nicotine dependence has been developed is somewhat less important than other things. So they saying for the most of the younger, younger age people, um... Taste is secondary. Like nicotine, that's like secondary. But it's more the glamorous that attracts them. And the coolness that get their attention. All the plan. Topic. Learn how smoking begins. Info. The purpose of Project 16, Project 16, Imperial Tobacco Canada is outlined. Quote, since how the beginning smoker feels today has implications for the future of the industry. It follows that a study of this area would be of much interest. Project 16 was designed to do just that, to learn everything there was to learn about how smoking begins. From studies, y'all, how high school students feel about being smokers and how they perceive their use of tobacco in the future. And this was called Project 16. Wow. Oh, that other one, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The other one I had just read, that was called the Bad Night Back in 1977. But the one I read about at a younger age, taste requirements and satisfaction in the cigarettes, I thought to play secondary role to the social requirements. So that's why most teenagers were pulled toward smoking to socialize to fit in, to be cool on my own person all of that so, wow topic peer pressure is important at 11 but may want to quit by 17 not that they sure they start at 11, they gonna be addicted by 17 info the summary of the findings of project 16 are that Quote, there is no doubt that peer group influence is the single most important factor in the decision by adolescent to smoke. Serious efforts to learn to smoke occur between ages 12 and 13 in most cases. However, intriguing smoking was at 11, 12, or 13. By the age of 16 or 17, many regretted their use of cigarettes for health reasons. That early started having health reasons, heart attacks. Oh, ain't no tell, being a diabetic, who knows what well, all health issues they have when they start smoking at 11, 12, and 13. And by the age of 16 and 17, many regretted their use of cigarettes for health reasons. 
and because they feel unable to stop smoking because now the nicotine done kicked in. The addiction is there when they want to. By the age of 16, peer pressure to initiate others to smoking is gone. So they got to get them young. And that was called it back in 1977. And that was from the a summary of the findings of Project 16, y'all. Topic, Marlboro dominates youth. Info, a Philip Morris memo states that, quote, Marlboro dominates in the 17 and younger age category, capturing over 50% of the market. And that was quoted by Philip Morris in 1979. While Marlboro dominates in the 17 and younger age category, capturing over 50% of the market. That's over half of the market, the 17 and younger age group. Wow, that is just sad on so many levels. And they don't even care about the young people health. These are people, kids that pick up these habits, that have it, and then start having all kind of health issues. Got to go to the doctor now. Get all kind of other things to help with the things that that done started in their life, in their body, in their mass. Ain't no telling when you start smoking that young what type of side effects it's having. That nicotine, what it's really doing to them. Because they still at that age. They still in their transition. And that's just so sad. And then they had a project. Seven project. 16 and this is this is this horrible horrific so now I'm getting ready to read the Bible y'all so I got her done yeah August 30th 20 Sunday they don't really care about us yeah, okay, and they doing they still been doing studies. Still doing studies. On what and who you might ask. Probably gotta research some things to find that out. You got to seriously research things. Cause who knew this was out there? Like, whoa. Whoa. I didn't even know where to come from. Which angle? I'm all discombobulated. That basin got me discombobulated in this breed. Well, hopefully they get it right this week. That's the prayer I have in the Father. Because, uh-uh, you just can't. This, this is unacceptable. Right, babe? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. I mean, well, God already knows, you know what I'm saying? I don't think it's a force if it's if it's meant for us to go. It's just meant for us to go, but if it's meant for us to just stay on them so they can get her done, that's, what I think that's what's going to happen because... Don't be quiet. Right. I ain't... I, no. I'm, I'm, that not, that's not even me, and God know that's not me. That's you know, because I make noise. That's what's going on in the world. Right. You shut your mouth. I'm trying to make you be quiet and keep a mask on for every situation. Shh. Don't talk. Don't pay me no attention right now, y'all. Because <laughs> I can use that man as a metaphor for a lot of things, for real. Okay, here we go. Is smoking a sin? Let's read about it. And again, this is about the guy named Cooper Abrams. He wrote this. He said to read the testimonies of, okay. It's just about his testimony and testimonies of others. Pete and I both smoke. The, uh, okay, he had a close friend named Pete Butler. Okay, so this is a continual read. It's like a whole story. I just broke it up. So this is a continuation. Pete Butler is a friend, and they were saved about the same time, basically. So Pete and I both smoked, and we made a pact together 
that we would quit that we would quit and for two or three weeks we both did right that was good one saturday morning he and i planned to go down to the tar river which was nearby to prepare a place we planned to have our boys camp out the next week boys camp out the next week <clears throat> i got up early and ate breakfast and drank a cup of coffee there's nothing like having a smoke after a good meal and a cup of coffee, and I was craving a cigarette. I walked over to my wife's father county store. I walked over to my wife's father county store to visit, to wait for Pete, who was coming to pick me up. There on the shelf was those Salem cigarettes. Ooh! That's the can my mama used to smoke, y'all. That was her. That was her cigarette, Salem's. They're on the shelf with those Salem cigarettes. I had smoked for so many years. Oh, that was his can too. The urge to smoke was so great. I was having a real nicotine fit, and I gave in and I bought a pack hurriedly, lifting one to my mouth. Wow! I took a deep draw on the weed and although for a moment it made me dizzy the old pleasure came back wow he said on the weed <laughs> i fought really hard to ignore my failure and put it out of my mind peter ride and we headed for the river without thinking falling back to my old habits i took the pack of savings out of my pocket and as I stuck the smoke to my lips, I offered Pete one. Wow. What happened next, I will never forget. Pete just looked at me with surprise and disgust. In a raised voice, he said, Cooper, I do not believe you are offering me a cigarette. The conviction that gripped my heart at that moment was overpowering I felt like the lowest person on earth. I have failed my friend and I have most of all failed the Lord. I took the cigarette from my mouth and threw it and the pack out the window of the truck in from Linwood Joyner's house there on Highway 97. I threw the pack out of the window, out of the window of the truck and from Linwood, Linwood Joyner's house there on Highway 97. I had never smoked since. Wow, whoa, man, that look, that look must have did it. Y'all know how we give our kids that look like when they acting up, you be like, sometimes it'll shut them down for good, and sometimes for a minute. But nevertheless, it have an effect right then and there. So when he laid him that look and said his name like that, that must have shook his soul, boy. Wow. That's deep. The Lord did not give up on me. And that day, God answered my prayers. And through him, I overcame that addictive habit and grew closer to the Lord. As I look back, and I know that if I had not continued to seek God's help, I would have never overcome smoking and would not today be a gospel preacher and pastor. I knew I was a bad testimony for the Lord and a bad example to my son, my wife, my church, and those youth I work with. I knew, too, that Christ suffered for my every sin. Amen. And every time I lit, lit up and smoked, I caused him pain 2,000 years ago. My spiritual relationship with the Lord would never have grown. And it would have prevented the Lord from using me. I would have remained a defeated Christian, really unfit for the Lord's use. Thank God he loved me enough to deliver me from that sin. By the way, that was 26 years ago. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. And whoa. Right? 
By the way, that was 26 years ago. And I have not had any respiratory problems since. And all my allergies cleared up. Wow. Whoa. Got her done. Now these is what you call testimonies. When I used to go to church, they used to have testimony service. It's kind of clean, man. I'm just kind of glad. I better leave well enough alone. I used to sit there. They used to have testimony service. It was an order how they did things. And people would get up, the older women in church would get up and tell their testimony that probably happened during the week. Uh, I used to love test. It's just something about testimony service. I used to look forward to testimony service because I feel like they relatable. Um, they real life. And so, like, some would be like, how they come pay their bill. And everything. I used to hear this quite a few times and how God laid it on maybe somebody's heart they knew. And they'll go to their mailbox. They'll be checking the mailbox for them. And I'd be like, wow, whoa. And then sometimes it'd be like how they was trying to get to church. And they was running late. A uh, summer happened with their car and they can't make it. And then the lady, God laid it on somebody hard to call them and ask them, is you okay? Do you need a ride or anything? Because the Lord laid it on my heart to call you. What's going on? They was like, oh, thank you. Yeah, because my car ain't start. I used to hear these type of testimonies. And I stayed, I was in church for years, y'all. So I done heard a lot of testimonies throughout my um, younger years, because I was in church like a lot at the age of, I man, I was just going to church back and forth from 11, 12, 13, but I gave my life over to the Lord at the age of um, 15. <clears throat> the summer after my freshman year, <clears throat> I gave my life over to the Lord, and it was a whole lot of work in progress during that whole time, still is today. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, I accepted him as my Lord and Savior at the age of 15 that summer when I finished my freshman year. So, yeah, so I, 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 even after that, I was still going to churches. I wasn't really hearing testimony service back then. They started dwindling in off and everything. But I remember them as a, as a grammar school girl in church listening to testimony service. I love testimonies because they're very encouraging. They uplifting and they people real life story. I mean, like and you then you be like, if it can happen to them, if God can just work things out for them, he can do that for me also. And that's what I'm saying about this basement. Everywhere I went, it was a God move. So I'm saying, like, if it's meant for us to move, I but I, I really don't feel that. I'm on I, that's not what I'm really picking up. You know how we get caught up in our flesh and in a moment, you be like out of frustration. Like, yeah, I'm out of here. But when you just calm down and you just, like, meditate and just look over the situation, you be like, no, nah, Lord. I mean, what's the purpose of bringing us here and having us in here for four years just to uproot us again? It don't work like that in my life. You know, well, at one time it did at another place I was in. So... Ah, that kind of just came back to memory. So, really, I don't even know. We'll see. But I'm not really trying to move. You know, I'm just trying to settle and be here for these last three to go ahead and make their transition into their life. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be bouncing them around and everything because, like, Junior, he'll be 21. He's 20. Shan, 18. And rain 17. So I feel like I, 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 my thought process was to just stay here until they go ahead and make their transition out there into life and everything. And then whatever me and the husband want to do after that, it just be, um, it just be me and him. I don't have to be thinking about, you know, the kids and all that. They have to do homeschooling, all of that. So I kind of just wanted to stay put here. For a good minute. So we'll see. But I'll keep y'all updated on this situation. But nevertheless. I hope y'all enjoyed 
the uh, smoking and health. It just be so much information and how they really, really, really targeted the youth and they still is. And a lot of people that's older that started back then, like my mom and them, they probably in their 70s now, probably all have, well, if they never stop, have, have like medical issues. Well, I probably don't even pass from from smoking now, you know, from back in the 50s up until 2020 and everything. Uh, and I don't want to forget talking about that, how um, Chadwick, the one played the Pink Panther, I mean the Pink Panther Lord, Black Panther, passed, uh, was it yesterday, Friday night, I think we heard. And everything, which is really sad. He had colon cancer. And he suffered suffered from that for four years. It's just all sad. It's just cancer is just sad on so many levels, y'all. And it, it 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 don't have no it don't have no respect to people. It don't care who you is. It don't care what color you is. It don't care about your gender. It just doesn't care. It shows up, and once it show up. The struggle is real. And I'm sure it shows up before it ends up taking your life. You know, we read the process, you know. It's going to cause a lot of damage. It's just going to break you down to just done and everything. So I don't know what causes colon cancer. I don't know, you know. But cancer, nevertheless, is, um, I feel like it's formed from chemicals. And it attacks our body and break our body down. And the world done gave it the word cancer. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, death nevertheless. Slow death, methodical, methodically death, everything. What I have been reading about, you know, I'm just touching on the topic of cigarettes. But there's so many other things out here that we, we put in our bodies that have chemicals. That causes so much damage. And they give it the word cancer. You know? So yeah. Basically it's just death. Psh, a slow death. And that's just messed up. That was really sad to hear. And everything. You know? Just sad. But nevertheless. Let me go ahead and. Get off and do what I do and everything. So I hope y'all enjoy both reads and smoking the sin. It was really good. Smoking the health and everything. And I hope you're taking something away from both reads. And again, if it don't apply to you, I'm sure it'll apply to somebody you know, somebody, somebody you love. And the thing about it is just pass it on. You know what I'm saying? If you got kids, do your best to try to deter them because y'all see what age they target our kids. And then next thing you know, they be addicted to they like 50, 60, 70. It could take them all the way up to that. But just suffering for years and years and years, you know. And of course, we don't want to see our kids suffer. We don't want to suffer. But like I say, we, 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 can we, can we can do what we need to do to get her done at the age we at and everything. If we want to get her done, you know. So, yeah. But our children, come on now, they like babies. So on that note, I'm out. I hope everybody have a blessed Wednesday, a safe Wednesday, a protective Wednesday, a productive Wednesday. Get her done and a protective Wednesday and Thursday. And I see y'all back at the table on Friday. And on that note, I'm out, y'all. Peace, love, share something. And what I holla. Bye, y'all. Okay, y'all, so this is what I was talking about. Let's see all that water. And it's Sunday. It started Friday. And he's saying they can't get nobody out. But it's like a little puddle running from here. Look how much water is deep. Like... And it's just, and then they go around to 
uh, here. That one right there. Sunny head to wash, can't even wash. Because it's so deep. He used to shop back to, to get some. You see all that dirt? I don't know what is that. Then it's coming out through that red one right there. Then it goes. It's just a mess. But yeah, I just wanted y'all to see. This is what I've been having to deal with. But they'll know I'm coming right again. It'll go down. But I guess because it's broke. It just come back eventually. Maybe a month later. Or something like this. It's going to be over there next. So, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. And he done used the shop back to get a lot up over here. See this dirt coming through. So, tomorrow... Let me, oh, I'm getting ready to make my video soon. But tomorrow... He gonna have to send somebody out here because this is ridiculous and it smell. I think I'm gonna move y'all. See, this is what I'm talking about. So let me get ready to make this video. I'll be back. Peace.